By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim? Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And welcome to X-Points Final 33. Yeah, already Final 33. And this is between um, Jason and Joseph. So it's going to be quite uh, interesting. We've got Troll Midrange against, I guess I can call it Urnum on Ice. But it's got some really interesting additions. It's not just your your basic Urnum on Ice. You know, there are some cool, cool things happening in the deck. But more about that during the uh, deck deck section of the video. But before we go there, I would first like to have a look at this points list. So this is of course the X points point list and how does X points work? Well, you've got 10 points that you can spend on cards with points allocated to them. So you kind of have to choose what cards you're gonna play and what cards you're not gonna play. So um, for example, you could you could consider playing all the Moxon, but it's gonna cost you 10 points and you've got no points left for any other card. So then you cannot not play a Sol Ring in the deck or play a Mistress Factory or him in that deck. Talking about him to Turek, they are playing according to the Atlantic rules, meaning that you can also play with Fallen Empire and also Mana Burn is real. Now, if you wanna know more about the rules, the ins and outs, check out the video description. In that same description below, you can also find a series of timestamps. I know some people prefer to go straight to the games, for example, then you can click on the timestamp MTG Games It'll take you straight to the action. Okay, and now that you're fully informed, I'm going to continue with the deck decks. I'm going to start with uh, the deck of Joe. Let's have a look. And here we see the deck of Joe. So, I mean, this is pretty cool, right? It's Earn Him on Ice with a lot of differences. You know, it's kind of has, has that core of Earn Him on Ice, having the Ice Storms, uh, you know, to play out, having the Earn Him Gins, of course, and also playing with um, the Mana Acceleration in the form of one Lana War Elves, and three birds of paradise but there's obviously more blue in this list there's also a bit more control in the form of two wrath of gods and of course the four counter spells so you want to have that double blue that's probably why he's pretty heavily invested in those birds of paradise now the core of the deck i i believe is still the same you really want to take the tempo advantage early on right you want to drop your birds or your lawnmower turn one and then turn two you want to play your ice storm Turn three, you want to play your Urnum Jin. You know, you also have your, your control elements in the form of your counter spells to then protect your Urnum Jin. You've got your Swords to Plows here, of course, to kind of control the creatures of your opponent. Swords being very strong in a format that's full of trolls that we're going to see today as well. So, of course, Swords works great against those regeneration creatures. Um, and yeah, White in general, of course, gives you access to these really good control spells like Disenchant and Wrath of God and, and of course, Balance. So all these cards are in this deck as well. And then there are also four Sarah Angels in here. So, you know, there are some, some strong creatures in this deck. There's some beef in this deck with those Sarah Angels and Urnums. And then there's one other thing that it, that's in this deck that I really, really like. And that is the Simbad together with the Sylvan Library. I really love this synergy. Simbad is a 1-1 one -one creature from Arabian Nights for one blue and one to cast. You can tap it to draw a card. If that card is not a land card, you have to discard the card, right? So if it's a land card, you get to keep it. How do you know if you're going to draw lands? Well, that is where Sylvan Library comes in really handy. It's an enchantment from Legends one green and one, and that allows you to look at your top three cards during your draw step, put them in any order and put them back on top of your deck. Now, if you wanna draw an extra card, you can do that as well with the Sylvan, but you've gotta pay four life every time you do that, and you can only draw two extra cards. So in theory, you could draw three cards, but then you have to pay eight life. The nice thing, of course, is when you have Simbad in play, you can kind of see what three cards you wanna have. You can put that land back on top of your library, tap the Simbad and kind of draw that land for free, so have an extra draw. If there are no lands in there, you can also use your Simbad to kind of mill away the cards you don't need and keep the cards you want. So it's really good to have that combination between Simbad and Sylvan Library. Now, the danger, of course, of this combo, I guess, is that, you know, Simbad is very vulnerable being a 1-1 creature. It's got summoning sickness. It takes some time. You also need to have your, your Sylvan. If you don't have your Sylvan on board, the Simbad is you know, semi-valuable because, of course, if you're low on lands, you're going to use it anyway, but it is a big risk. I mean, you might as well, you know, mill away your Ancestral Recall, for example, and yes, that has happened to me. So it, it's a little bit risky. Um, and of course, it also takes slots of your deck. So it's always really difficult when you're brewing, like, can I find space? And that's, of course, the nice thing about X points is that your power cards and a lot of, like, usual suspects that you would put in your deck um, you know, have points allocated to them and you can only spend 10 points. So, for example, in this brew, 
there is no space anymore to add the moxin. If you would add the moxin or a black lotus, you would have to make difficult decisions and maybe cards like Simbad would not be played. So it's nice to see that here that there's space in this version of the deck. So I'm just really curious, Joe, if we're gonna see Simbad in action, I would love to see that. You've made it all the way to the final, so obviously it works very well for you. Okay, this is the deck of Joe. Now let's take a look at the deck of his opponent. And here we see the deck of Jason. Well, actually not the deck, just a selection of cards in his deck. We don't have a deck picture, unfortunately, but I do have a pretty good idea of what he wants to do. He's playing red, black, and a little bit of blue. And that means that obviously he's playing with set strolls and hypnotic specters. We see that often in uh, in X points. And I think what makes this so good, you know, to kind of add black is of course those him to Turex. This is a format where you can play with Fallen Empires. Him to Turek, insanely good a card from Fallen Empires, two black, Target player discards two cards at random. I mean, that's really good. And then when you've got your hippie, you kind of have this discard theme going. Um, and of course, Hypnotic Spectre, also a really good creature, right? A 2-2 two -two flyer for three. And when it hurts your opponent, your opponent has to discard a card at random, you know? So it's, it's just really good to have these discard spells. And the nice thing to see here is that the opponent today um, here of, of Jason is playing more a tempo game. You know, trying to take care of the lands, uh, trying to to get ahead on board with with the birds and the lunar rails, kind of get ahead in tempo. Where um, the, this deck is is more focused on trying to get ahead with card advantage. You know, by discarding the cards of your opponent, you're getting card advantage. Of course, we also see some land removal in the deck in the form of stone rain. We also have a lot of direct damage. We've got lightning bolts. We've got disintegrates. Um, and then there's the blue splash. I believe we also have a psionic blast in the deck, and we have power sinks. And blue also gives uh, Jason access to Solkanar the Swamp King, which is a there's a one off in the deck, which I think is super cool. So Solkanar, one blue, one black, one red, two for a five five Swamp Walker, and it also gives you one life each time a black spell is cast. So this is actually a really good creature. The problem, of course, is that you need the three types of mana to be able to cast it. Um, but yeah, you know, I, I think with this deck with the mana base, it's uh, it is possible. He's playing, for example, with City of Brass. Um, he's playing with the Mox Jet, which is interesting. So just one Mox, that's the Mox Jet. That's the one he's chosen for. Um, I think because there are a lot of cards here in the deck that require a double black. I would say black is really the main focus color of the deck. Um, there's a card he's playing with today, Demonic Hordes, which I think is super cool. I'm hoping to see that. He's got a one-off Demonic Hordes in here. So it's really cool to see a deck with Demonic Hordes reaching the finals. Um, and then you see the blue card that a Power Sink is playing with two Power Sinks. A Psionic Blast, the Soul Canar, and I believe those are his only blue cards, I think. But I'm not quite sure. As I said, we don't have a deck photo, but I believe those are his only uh, blue cards. So, for example, there's no blue power here in the deck. And, of course, that's all because of those X points, right? X points, you can only spend the 10 points. Power cards, obviously, are heavily uh, taxed with points. So, it's, it's, it's difficult to make that decision where in, you know, regular old school, when you have a black red blue deck you always see that blue power coming back you always see those moxin coming back and in this case you cannot do that because then you will cross that 10 points boundary meaning you have more space for other cards and yeah i, th I think it's kind of cool to then see a card like demonic hordes being in a, in, in a deck in the finals of, of such a, gr a great and big monthly uh, online events so that's quite exciting what i do see lately in in, in a lot of finals here in x points is of course the set trolls and if not expectors i don't know if that's bad you know, because I think there, there are ways to get rid of these creatures. Uh, but it's just something I noticed. Let me know in the comments below if you also see a lot of these set trolls and hypnotic specters in your matches in X points. And uh, maybe you're playing with it, you know. They're, they are, of course, really cool cool and good creatures. So I, I do understand. Like Sedge, one black and two to cast for a 2-2 two -two that gets this bonus when you have a swamp, plus one, plus one. And you can regenerate it for black. So you basically always have a 3-3 three, three regenerator for just three mana. I mean, that is insane value in old school you know this is just really 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 bonkers anyway uh this is the deck of jason we've looked at uh, the deck of his opponent and that means we're ready let's go to the finals of x points x points final 33 here we go we've got jason sitting on the right so he's playing troll mid-range blue black and red taking on joseph who's playing a blue white green kind of earn him on ice with Simbats in there as well, which I think is pretty cool. And Counter Spells and Wrath of God, so maybe a bit more controlling. Here we see Jason starting with the Sinkhole, taking care of the Tropical Island. That's not great. This is actually what Joseph wants to do, right? He's a player that wants to go Birds of Paradise, turn one, and then turn two Ice Storm. It's not happening, though. Here we see uh, a Strip Mine by Joseph. 
and a pass. And there is a factory. And let's see what he's going to do. Oh, is he now going to flip? I guess he doesn't because then Joseph can respond by using the strip. There's a city of brass. Going to take a damage. Going to go down to 19. Changing his mind. Going to go back up to 20. We also see a Chaos Orb in his hand, by the way. There's a pass to Jason. So it's looking quite good for Jason here. Kind of has that control at the moment, at least. There we see him to Turek. Yeah, this is really good. No counter magic from Joseph. Remember, he is playing with four counter spells, but they're not in his hand. Now he's going to lose two cards at random. That is pretty tough. Oh, Chaos Sarp gone here. Oh, that is not great. Was perhaps thinking about casting that Chaos Sarp the previous turn. And I mean, there's something to be said to do that and not to do that. Of course, the downside is if he would have cast it, uh, he would give Jason the opening to flip with his Chaos Orb on the Chaos Orb of Joseph. But I mean, that's not that bad, right? Then you trade Chaos Orb for Chaos Orb. And if he doesn't, okay, then you still have your options open next turn. Here we see uh, a Savannah being played out by uh, by Joe and passing the turn. By the way, if I say Joe or Joseph, I'm meaning the same person. <laughs> just just to, uh, to clarify. And Jason here playing another Mishra's Factory. Nice uh, Winter Factory copies, by the way. Looking really shiny, tapping both of them here. There's a Disenchant though. So I guess he's animating one with the other. There's a Disenchant. So he's going to lose that Winter Factory. Three cards in hand there for uh, for Joe. Joseph is going to flip here. Probably on that City of Brass. Perhaps on the Strip Mine. That could be another option as well. Let's see if he hits. It is a hit. Yeah, it was on the City of Brass. The so City of Brass is gone. There's a pass. There's a desert. Tapping both. A Sylvan. Okay, this Sylvan is really important. That can kind of bring Joe back into the game after that him to Turek. And Joseph, of course, they're probably going to attack. Are we going to see a strip here? I mean, maybe I would do it here because two life is half a card because you've got the Sylvan. He is taking the damage. Going to drop here to 18. Looking at the cards. What is he going to do? Going to take an extra card, it seems. Going to go to 14. There's a Tundra. Three cards in hand. Passing the turn so we don't see another Urnum, for example. And of course, no Simbat. Ooh, there's a Disenchant. Taking care of business. And I mean, look at Jason. He's pretty light on Lance. Again, but maybe it's me. I would be really tempted to use this trip here on that underground sea. Because he's so light on lands. But look at that. He wants to keep the 5 to cast Sarah Angel. Makes sense. Sarah 4-4 four, four flyer. Doesn't have to tap when it attacks. A beautiful card in old school. Hitting the board. And the tables seem to be turning here. After that him, kind of Jason was in the drive, driver's seat. But couldn't find any lands. And he's kind of stuck now. And now Joe can start attacking here. Are we going to see a terror by Jason? I guess the terrors are in his sideboard though, so we're not going to see that. He does have one psionic blast, but doesn't have enough mana for that. Are we now going to see a power sink on the second Sarah? No, we're not. Big trouble here for Jason. He's on 16, looking at 8 damage coming in next turn. Needs to find something. There's another him. Taking care of the last card out of Joe's hand, but Joe's fine with that. Him's not going to solve the problems here for Jason. Eight damage coming in. It's going to half his life total. It's going to drop down to eight. There's the attack. Jason's going to drop to eight. It's looking really bad for him. He's going to draw a card for turn. Is there something? Nope. Nothing that can save him here. So this is a win here for, uh, for Joe. And... That's quite interesting, right? That moment where Jason, uh, you know, played the uh, the hymn and it wasn't looking that well for uh, for Joseph, you know, losing that Chaos Orb. I thought, well, it's looking quite good for Jason, but uh, I think the Sylvan here really made all the difference. And of course, the fact that Jason simply couldn't find any lands. You need lands to play the game. It's as simple as that. Anyway, this is just the first game. Both players are going to uh, dive into their sideboards and we will catch back up with them in game number two.
Game number two is about to begin. So let's take a look. Jason here taking a mulligan. That is not great here. Remember, he's already one game down. Needs to win this. Playing underground seat, passing the turn. Let's see what Joe can do. Tropical Island. There is the Lanawar Elves. An altered version. Can tap still for one green. It's a 1-1. One -one. There we see City of Brass. And there's a him to Turek. So he's on the him game again. And him, of course, being really good, especially early in the game, when the hand is nice and full. So let's see what cards he is going to lose. There is an Urnum, and ooh, that's Simbat. That is regretful. Could have played that out next turn. So pretty good him. Passing the turn back here. Let's see what Joe can do. Land drop here, Tundra. Are we going to see an Ice Storm? We're going to see a time walk. Okay. Can now, of course, attack for free. Yep, ping him for one. Put him on 19. Take, uh, take the extra turn. I mean, not the best time walk in the world. But hey, it's going to give you some tempo advantage. So Jason now on 18. Of course, after also taking the damage from his own City of Brass. Here we see another attack and a Simbat. So the Simbat, the 1-1 one, one creature from Arabian Nights, he can tap it to draw a card. And then if it's a land card, he gets to keep it. If not, he's got to discard the card. Works really well with Sylvan. Here we see a Volcanic Island. Going to tap both. Are we going to see another him? There's another him. So again, uh, Joe needs to discard everything. And that's, of course, a big problem, right? No cards in hand anymore, I believe. So that side of the deck of Jason is doing, uh, doing a good job. And... I think if you're Joe, you just have to hope to top deck or a creature, which is good. You know, Sarah Angel or Urnum you can cast. Or, of course, a Sylvan Library together with that Simbat would be really good now in this stage in the game. And if you're Joseph, you're hoping for, for example, a Setch Troll, just something to put pressure on. He's now on 14. And it looks like he's asking about the, uh, the creatures. Maybe has some removal in hand. I mean, if you've got a bolt, which of these two creatures would you bolt? You could say I'm going to bolt the Lanora Elf so he doesn't have five mana to potentially cast a Sarah Angel if he top decks it. They're also talking about their life totals, I believe. So he's going to go back up to 15. And he's just passing the turn. Okay, could still mean he's got a bolt. There's the attack for two. Okay, so he's going to tap the Volcanic. There's the Bolt on the Simbat. He's going to go for the Simbat here. Simbat, of course, really, really handy if, uh, if Joseph can find that Sylvan. There's another City of Brass. Yeah, those City of Brasses are going to hurt at a certain point. The good thing for Jason here is that at least there's not too much pressure. I mean, Joseph is only just taking one damage at a turn. So he's uh, Jason now on 13. He's got some time. Passing again. I believe there are two or three cards in hand there for Jason. And uh, one card, no, three cards in hand for Joe. Okay, there is a Chaos Orb. And just a pass, that kind of makes sense. Are we going to see a Counter Spell? Nope, no Counter Magic from Jason. Remember, he is playing with some Power Sinks. But no Power Sinks from him here. It's going to draw for turn. Just passing. Oh, it's not looking great for Jason. Really has to find something. There's an attack. It's going to be on 11. Tapping 4. There's an Urnum. Yep, this is really a problem. Are we going to see a Counter Spell now? A Power Sink, perhaps? Yep, there's a Power Sink. So that's a good decision here. Perhaps Joseph uh, or Jason kept that Power Sink. Decided not to Power Sink the uh, Chaos Orb. Just waiting for a creature threat. So obviously that was a good decision. There is a Swamp here. Gonna tap five. Okay, he's gonna take two though. What are we gonna see for five? Perhaps Soul Canard, the Swamp King? That would be pretty sweet. No, we're gonna see a Stone Rain and a Sinkhole. So really attacking the mana base here of Joseph. And I mean, that's good, but he's still dying. That's a problem. <laughs> then again, if he cannot just find a Setch Troll or Sengir Vampire that's also in his deck, or that Soul Canar, he's kind of fine, you know. This also works. Ooh, he's going to tap it, though. There's a Jam Day Tome to get some extra card draw going. 
And now if you're Joe, do you want to flip here on the Tome? I mean, you could consider doing it. You can also attack for one here. Jason already on eight. He only has three mana, of course. That's a problem. And he doesn't have access to white at the moment. I mean, white gives him access to disenchant, to swords. And he doesn't have that. It looks like he is going to flip here. So I wonder what he's going to flip on. I guess the book. It is a hit. He's going to flip here on the book. So the book is a goner. And he's not attacking. Interesting. I thought he would be attacking. Does that mean that he needs that green mana for something? Or did he simply forget after the flip? I think the latter, right? Just taking the damage here. Going, going to go to 18. No pump from Jason. Of course, he wants to keep his other factory at bay to block. Five cards in hand for Joe. But I guess he needs more mana. That double land destruction from Jason was quite good. So we've got a really interesting game number two here on our hands. Ooh, he's going to animate both and attack. Wow, four damage. Does that mean that he's got another creature to play out here? So 14 for Joe. Going to drop to seven. Oh, again, a land removal, a sinkhole. That is really good. So Jason really attacking that mana base. There's the Sylvan. But I mean, Joseph now on 14, gonna probably take four damage, drop to 10. You know, he's getting dangerously low and it, it, it's difficult to use the Sylvan aggressively. Oh, more land removal. Wow. I mean, Jason's deck has really been transformed into this land destruction deck. I didn't realize how much land destruction uh, there is in Jason's deck. But I mean, stone rains and sinkholes, that is really good. Joseph, you're just drawing the one card. Passing the turn. Wow. And Jason really turning this game around. I guess he's going to attack again. I mean, you really don't want to block if you're Joe. Because, I mean, you need that Lanawer Elf. He's on six. Going to find the City of Brass. What can he do? Okay, there is a Disenchant in hand. And now he's got white mana. So he's just going to pass. Ooh, tapping three. Are we going to see a Sedge? We're going to see a Gloom. Wow, Gloom from the side is doing work here. This is disastrous for Joe. Cannot play Disenchanter Swords at the moment because the factories are not animated. Now he has to pay that extra price for the Gloom, that extra tax that he cannot pay. It looks like it's going to be the end of the road here for Joseph. This is really bad news for him. I mean, finding that City of Brass, having Disenchant in hand, I believe I also saw Swords in there, I'm not quite sure. So, he could have kind of Disenchanted Swords his way back into the game, but I don't think that's going to happen now. Jason dropping here to 5, attacking with 1, going to pump it to 3. Joseph Life halved here, going to drop to 3. This is really bad for Joseph. I think that Gloom kind of sealed the deal here. I mean, he can jump next turn, buy him another turn. Ooh, he's going to pick up the cards, it seems. Yep, he is picking up the cards. Game number two, won by Jason. That means it's 1-1. One, one. This is so exciting. We're going to go to game number three. Game number three, the finals of X points 33. The decider, Joe, here on the play, starting with a Savannah. There's the Birds of Paradise. This is what his deck wants to do. Are we going to see a Bolt the Bird? That's a big question. There's the Batlands. There's the Bolt. Bolt the Bird. I just love saying that. Anyway, the Birds Toast. We've got a roasted chicken on the menu tonight. There we see a Desert. There's a Sylvan Library. Okay, I mean, this is quite good for Joe. Good start for him. Remember, for Jason, it's really hard to get rid of enchantments with the colors he's playing with. If he cannot counter them, they're probably going to stick. So that Sylvan's going to do a lot of work. Okay, <laughs> I said it, and then there's the Chaos Orb, the one answer to the Sylvan. I wonder if Joe has a Disenchant in hand. First, going to look at the top three cards, still on 20, so he can play quite aggressively if he wants to. Just going to go for the one. 
There's the City of Brass, and are we going to see a Disenchant? Yep, there's the Disenchant on the Chaos Orb. And I think this is a good decision. Another line of play could have been to wait for Jason to activate the Chaos Orb in response play the Disenchant, but I think this is better. Here you have everything in your own hands, and, you know, what if... You know, Jason finds another blue, a way to counter it or to protect the Chaos Orb. And you really want to keep that Sylvan in the, in the meanwhile. By the way, we see a Swords being played out on a factory here. Jason taking two lives for that, going to go back up to 22. The problem here for Jason, of course, is that he also loses a land drop, so kind of gets behind. Two cards in hand. No pressure, though, from Joe. No Urnum. Not enough mana yet for Sarah. Are we going to see a him here? Nope, just a pass by Jason. So that's quite lucky for, for Joe. Remember, the previous games, we always saw Jason at this stage of the game playing quite aggressively with the hymns. I guess he doesn't have any in hand. Also a pass by uh, by Joseph here. So both players kind of not finding any pressure. There's a jam day tome here by Jason. Are we going to see an end step disenchant? Yes, we're going to see an end step disenchant here on the jam day tome. Unfortunate here for Jason. There we see the cards... I think I saw a trop, maybe some counter magic. So just a pass here. I'm a little bit surprised that Joseph is not using the Sylvan more aggressively. At this stage, he's still pretty high up in life. And he's got to be careful though with the cards because you can kind of see them if you look closely enough. Another factory being played out by Jason, by the way. Again, just the land being chosen. I wonder what he has in hand there. Attacking here for two. Unfortunately, we have that little thing in front of us now. Exactly. Now it's gone. Thank you. <laughs> anyway, Joseph dropping to 17. I see a strip mine. I think that one card could be a counter spell that he keeps putting back. Then again, if it's a counter spell, why would he keep putting it back? You would probably just pay an extra four and have it in your hand. Anyway, the strip mine's here that can strip away the factory. Tapping four. Are we going to see a creature? I mean, I still haven't seen a Sedge. Oh, there's the Gloom again. <laughs> so the Gloom is going to tax those swords and disenchants. Not as destructive, though, as it was in game number two, because Joseph has a lot of lands now. Just going to draw one card again. I believe it was a Swords. Passing the turn back to Jason. Jason's going to untap. Tapping two black. Okay, there's the him. That actually took Jason a while to find the him. Now at least we're going to see what cards uh, Joseph has in hand. Quite curious. Okay, so the blue elemental blast. Yeah, that was kind of useless for now at least. And that, uh, and that sword is going to go. So just one card in hand. So maybe that card there is a, oh, that's, is it a control magic perhaps? It's really hard to see. I can see it and I cannot see it. You know what I mean? Anyway, one card in hand for Joseph now and just passing the turn. So kind of an interesting game three, right? Both players kind of waiting to find something. Okay, there's the hypnotic. So there's some pressure by Jason. Jason still on 22, Joseph on 17. Again, looking at the top three cards, just picking the one. Another duel. Tapping four. There's a control magic. Okay, so that was burning in his hand, probably. Waiting for a creature to steal. And it works. So the control magic is now on the side of Joseph. I mean, it's still there in Jason's battlefield. But just to clarify, it's now in possession of Joseph. There is another hypnotic specter. Okay, so we can have a hippie blocking a hippie. There's another Batlands. There's a pass. So it's a little bit confusing here. I mean, looking at Jason's uh, Battlefield Scene, the two Hypnotic Specters, but one of those is Joseph's. What I usually do is flip it around the one that's stolen. Oh, another Control Magic. So it was a Control Magic there, not a Counter Spell. I thought it was a Counter Spell. So now he's stealing both Hypnotic Specters. Wow, this is painful for Jason. This is not what you want to see. Now you need a Red Elemental Blast, actually. To get back into this. Okay, he's going to lose the, uh, what's it called again? Flash fires. So that destroys all planes. There we see a factory. Yep, and now Jason's putting the cards aside. 
There's the Mox Jet. It's looking, all of a sudden, it's looking really bad for Jason. I mean, Control Magic is such a good card. I mean, if you're Jason, you got to hope that you're going to find your Red Elemental Blasts, if they're even sideboarded in. Because Jason, uh, Joseph is not playing that much blue, so I can imagine jo Jason went like, okay, I'm not going to board in the Red Elemental Blast. So it's looking really bad. Jason dropping out to 16, but more importantly, he's losing the cards in hand. At least there's an attack for two. Going to put Joseph on 15. Oh, man, it's looking tough here for Jason. Just one card in hand, the card that he's probably going to lose. Let's hope for Jason that it's a bolt and he can bolt away at least one of the two uh, Hypnotic Specters. So there seems to be some, some noise issues, perhaps. So again, looking at the top three cards, attacking for four. And he's going to lose to him. Yeah, to him quite useless at this stage in the game. Jason dropping to 12, looking really bad for him. He needs a Sengir. I believe he's got two Sengir vampires. Finding a land, though. Attacking for two again. Ooh, there is. Swords to Plowshares. On the factory. So that means two extra life for Jason, but he's going to lose the only pressure that he had. And I mean, his own Hypnotic Spectres are wrecking him right now. Control Magic really taking over this game. Let's see. And I mean that Sylvan has done so much work for, for him, you know. Attacking here. Four damage. Jason dropping to ten. He needs a little miracle to get back into this. Just a pass, though. Ay, 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 ay. This is not great. Hopefully, he's got, a, he's got a bolt or a red elemental blast. There's the attack. And what is he going to lose? A power sink. Yeah, that's the worst. That's the worst. You play against Hypnotic Spectres and you have a counter spell in hand. Exactly. And now he drops the Urnum that you cannot counter because you lost your power sink. That's it. Yep. Joe winning here. And, and we could say thanks to Control Magics, right? Winning it on Control Magic here. Winning the finals. X points. 33. We have a winner. Congratulations, Joe. I mean, unfortunately, I couldn't see your Simbat Sylvan combo. Uh, going off here in the finals but uh, i do like your version of urnum on ice it's it's got some cool inclusions uh, that i talked about in the deck deck really really nice deck congratulations also J jason of course really cool deck but um just unlucky in that game three but the way you won game two with the gloom that was uh pretty epic i have to be honest anyway it was a nice nice final if you enjoyed it too please leave a like a comment and share this video on your socials all these things are free and really help the channel move forward and if you'd like to know more about x points by the way check out the description below because there's a link to their facebook page and also to their youtube channel um, and they organize free online tournaments every month so you can join for free play for free it's a fun and cool community so go and check them out talking about checking things out also take a moment to have a look at patreon.com slash timmy talks and please consider becoming a patron of the show it already starts for one dollar and for that dollar you get access to the timmy talks discord page we can chat with me but also with other patrons of the channel um, and your name will also be mentioned in the end scroll what end scroll this end scroll what shall we do with the drunken sailor what shall we do with the drunken sailor what shall we do with the drunken sailor
Bakaji.